Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The custom acrylic resin impression tray for the mandibular arch has been completed. And I should like to point out a few things about the tray. It has the 28 gauge pink relief wax. And we have also placed uh, several holes along the labial and the buccal flange region here to provide the relief for the hygroscopic uh, pressure. Uh, there are also some things I'd like to indicate uh, in looking at the tray. And that is that we have the lingual extension, the buccal extension, and the labial extension. And I think all too often we are uh, too quick to begin to border mold this area and make compound additions without first checking in the patient's mouth to see whether or not additions are even necessary. So that should be the first step uh, in the uh, uh, securing the final mandibular impression is to evaluate the tray interorally. Now just lean your head back there, Mr. Monahan. fine. And we're going to insert this tray into the patient's mouth. We're going to seat it over the residual ridge area. And then if we reflect the cheek, we can begin to look at some of these, uh, some of these uh, areas. Now you'll notice that the left labial flange is properly extended, while the left buccal flange in the posterior region is well short of the peripheral roll. In fact, you can see that there is a space that exists beneath the flange of the impression tray to the sulcus depth. Now, if we move to the other side of the mouth, you will notice that the labial flange in this side of the mouth is at the proper extension. In fact, the tissue comes through the notch, the buccal notch, quite nicely. I'm reflecting it here a little bit with the mirror so it doesn't come up completely free, but you notice it moves into that notch quite nicely, and indeed this flange is of the proper length as it is here in the labial region. Therefore, it is not necessary to completely border mold this impression tray, but rather we should be making extensions in this element to the buccal flange. Our labial flanges bilaterally are adequately extended, as is the patient's right uh, buccal flange. So at this time, I would like to make an addition with compound in this uh, area here. The flange can be extended by using the green stick compound. We pass the uh, stick through the flame to melt a small segment and then gently paint this on the flange that we wish to extend. Now we should paint this in very short, small segments in that it's very difficult to make major extensions all at once. Once you have some, some compound added to the tray, you should also seal it to the tray using the warm end of the number seven spatula. Now once you have made your initial compound uh, extension, you should then flame it very carefully with the alcohol torch to make sure that the compound surface is molten. And then before you go back to the patient, one should always temper compound in the water bath by placing it in the water bath. And you will notice that this water bath, the temperature is at approximately 130 degrees. And that that 130 degrees between 100 and 135 is adequate for tempering the compound. If the water is hotter than that, it of course would burn the patient. So again, we just temper the compound. Now you uh, ask the patient to open, and you very carefully insert the tray over the residual ridge, seating it properly and holding it in position, and taking a hold of the cheek, you roll the cheek out, down, forward, massage it gently on the side, and in this way you extend the buccal flange in a process that we call border molding. Once this has been completed, you can inspect the extension you have provided, that flange and compound. If we hold this and reflect the cheek down, you can see that we have indeed uh, extended the flange. You can see that the compound is filling the sulcus depth, and we have extended the flange to its proper dimension and its proper length. One of the most difficult modifications to the uh, tray is the evaluation of and the extension of the lingual flange. This is very difficult to tell whether or not the flange is of the proper thickness 
in the proper length. So I like to take and to, to trim this basically a little short on the preliminary model and then go back and develop the total lingual flanges bilaterally using the compound and the border molding process. So I should like to make those extensions at this time. Again, using the green stick compound, passing the compound through the flame, and heating the end of it and making short additions to this flange. Now I think that it's, it's wise for you to do these one at a time so as not to have too much uh, border molding taking place at one time. Again, we heat the compound addition with the alcohol torch, temper it in our water bath, and return to the patient. Open real wide for me, please. Seat the tray very comfortably. Ask the patient to raise the tongue. Now just let your tongue down and bring it forward. That's fine. And just let the tongue rest in the floor of the mouth. And just leave it there for a few moments. Open again and remove the tray and very carefully inspect to determine whether or not you are seeing a roll taking place as we are here in the lingual flange. Being satisfied with this, we can return to the compound and border mold the other half of the tray. Again, adding just small short segments with the compound. throughout the length of this lingual flange. Again, we'll return to the patient after tempering to perfect that lingual flange. Open, please. Raise your tongue up, let your tongue back down and seat this tray properly. Open. And you see, we have a very nice rounded flange. Now you see the compound has come into this portion of the tray. We will remove that with the uh, sharp blade of the uh, red handled knife, as well as remove the relief wax that we have in this tray in preparation for the final uh, impression using a wash material. For this particular impression, we are going to use the light-bodied rubber base. Again, in summary, the important point is that we did not completely border mold every aspect of the tray. We only border molded those segments that required it. The lingual flanges bilaterally, this small buckle flange, the two labial flanges and the opposing buckle flange were of an adequate length. So at this time, we will remove the pink wax we will gently round off the compound in preparation for the final impression. You notice we have removed the spacer now and we also have rounded off uh, the border molded compound. At this point, uh, we'll take the uh, adhesive for our light body rubber base and we will take and we will paint the adhesive uh, on the tray. Again, a very nice thin application of the adhesive through all parts of the tray, especially out on to the periphery. Again, turning the tray, painting the adhesive on this side, out on to our periphery, covering all parts of the tray adequately uh, with the adhesive. Now, having completed this, we can set the tray aside and let this adhesive dry. And while we uh, are waiting for it to dry, we can begin to dispense our impression material that we will be using for the patient. I indicated we will be using the light body uh, rubber base. And um, actually the amount is equal parts of the base to the catalyst, approximately oh, two and a half to three inches of material will suffice. Remember, this is a wash. This is not an impression using uh, this material. It is a wash. 
Also, you should be very careful so as not to permit the catalyst and the base material to run together at this time. So they should be widely separated uh, on your mixing pad. The making of any impression requires that the patient's mouth be very, very dry. And so I like to take these uh, four by four or three by four uh, gauzes, three by six gauzes, and fold them in half and then place this over the residual ridge and ask the patient to hold it in position to keep his mouth uh, nice and dry. We'll put one on this side. We'll carefully fold another and have the patient hold these in position with his index fingers and keep the mouth as dry as possible. Bring your fingers up here, one on each side. That's fine. And while he is holding those in position, we can begin to mix our final uh, impression of material. Again, as I said, we take the catalyst and introduce it into the uh, base material and spatulate this until we have a very nice, thin, even mix uh, of material. This usually takes, oh, 45 to 50 seconds in order to mix uh, the material satisfactorily. Now, once we have a nice homogeneous mixture of our wash material, we can then paint a very thin application of the material on our impression tray, taking it up in this little uh, stick here, painting a thin application of material throughout the impression tray. Remember, this is a wash, so we only need a very, very thin portion of the rubber base throughout the tray, making sure that material is up on the peripheries before we go back to the patient to seat the tray. You have ample working time with this uh, particular material. Now, once we have a nice thin wash on the tray, very carefully turning it, we can go back to the patient, ask the patient to remove the gauzes, dip your head right back, please, and just relax your cheeks, you seat the tray, raise your tongue up, let your tongue come forward, and very carefully hold the tray in position while the material is polymerizing. After a 10 minute period from the start of mix through the polymerization of the light body rubber base, we can then remove the uh, impression tray from the patient's mouth. Just relax now, free that up, just carefully remove it. At this point, you should always first inspect the mouth to make sure that there are no loose particles, none being present, you can then inspect the impression. You can see here that we have a very nice impression. We have recorded the roll on the buckle, on the labial, and everything seems to be in order. At this particular point, we would now go to the laboratory and box the impression in preparation for pouring the master model. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.